Hey guys, Nishquick here. Welcome back to the EXP podcast. And we're back again with Yggdrasil. He's back. Hey, everyone. Yeah. So last <laughs> time we talked about Future Redeemed. This time we're talking about Tears of the Kingdom. And just like our Future Redeemed podcast episode, it's going to be a spoiler cast this time. So if you haven't beaten Tears of the Kingdom, haven't done the story or pretty much a lot of stuff in the game, maybe come back to this later. It's going to have a lot of spoilers. But... Absolutely. Yeah, but we're going to talk as much as we can about this game. And yeah, like we've been waiting four years for it. And I guess, yeah, did it live up to the hype for you? Say that the problem with Tears of the Kingdom, it was a very difficult game to have hype for. Like, you know, there yeah. was the immediate, there, there was like the reveal trailer and like mm -hmm. the announcement. And it took a hot minute to get there. But then it was the weird marketing phase yeah. that sort of just took down, took things down a notch up till those last few weeks. And that was when the uh, whole like DLC mm -hmm. stuff was uh, bubbling around. Oh, is this DLC? Is this a real game? Is this actually yeah. going to be a sequel? And then they're yeah. marketing at $70 in the mm -hmm. announcement, and we've still not seen anything. Yeah, and I, in hindsight, that was not a good time to reveal that. Because, I don't know about you, but looking back at that February trailer, I didn't really like it that much. I was kind of forcing yeah. myself to like it, because my... I, I've always been hyped for this game. This is a sequel mm -hmm. to Breath of the Wild, which is one of the greatest games I've ever played. Zelda is my favorite video game franchise of all time. And I was like, th this is my most hyped game ever. And during that 2023 hype, like 2022, my hype just kind of died because we didn't hear anything. We got the delay. We got the yeah. we got the title and re release date trailer, which didn't show us anything. And then that February trailer, I thought it would be like a big blowout. But it really wasn't, in my opinion. No. And I was trying to see a lot of, hey, like there's changes in Hyrule, but they're minuscule. I didn't really get hyped until the gameplay reveal and the final trailer, but I, what did you think of the marketing for this game? Because I have some ideas about it, but I want to hear what you think about it first. I think it was very poor. I'm yeah. really surprised they let the marketing go that way. Um, obviously, I feel like they had a sense of comfort. It's like, you know, it's a Zelda title. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's after it's after um, Breath of the Wild, which was the the big explosive genre defining yeah. title it's like i feel like they might have had a sense of comfort but i'm still like baffled that the marketing was so it was low. kind of lackluster <laughs> yeah yeah like i could understand maybe holding off on some moments for production value and whatnot yeah um but i feel like especially for a lot of the naysayers that were just like oh this is going to be dlc oh it's just going to use the same stuff all over again it's like those guys need like people like that and obviously people like us we need to see a little bit of something i didn't um i didn't bother to pre-order the game at all until the gameplay trailer for mm, example yeah. Because I, I, I remember was, we, I did a, we did a episode of the exp podcast right after that and you were like, yeah. oh, I pre-ordered the game. I'm totally down. And, you know, real quick, going back to that episode, I remember that you said that this game would sell like hotcakes. Like, mm -hmm. uh, three of us were there. And it did. Like, it did. I, I said, like, it might approach Breath of the Wild sales. I don't know if it will surpass it. Uh, our other guest was like, it, it might meet in the middle. It might surpass it, but it'll take a while. I... I at that time, you were like, oh, it'll reach, like, Mario Kart numbers. And I was like, oh, no, it definitely won't. Honestly, mm -hmm. it might get there. <laughs> With, it's on track already. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. what, 10 million already sold in That's, the first month? Yeah. 10 million Some, in the first um, weekend. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. It, it was. It's a phenomenon. It still is a phenomenon. I don't think, in retrospect, it does enough. Mm. Which is far, which is crazy as it sounds because, you know, like, uh, I only beat the game a week and a half yeah. ago, and I'm going to get into it later, but I feel like there's there's still not enough to delineate it being, um, it, it doesn't escape the grounds of being called a sequel, okay. or, or like DLC sequel, in my opinion. Interesting. Um, I, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that. We can start away with that, or we can move on to other things and we'll come back to it. It's all on you. 
I think that is a good place to start, but I do, I do want to sure. give my quick little take on the marketing because a lot of people are saying, oh, the marketing wasn't good. I kind of agree to an extent, but hmm. I saw it in a very different way. I think the marketing wasn't bad, but at the same time, it what it didn't do a bad job in the sense that the game is still selling well of course that's partly because it's zelda everyone knows zelda like breath of the wild did good but mm. also i was a little nervous i was like there are many people in the general like casual populace that don't know that breath of the wild is getting a sequel so or how are they going to know about this game word of mouth did it but here's the thing they kept some of the biggest secrets of this game under wraps until the final trailer and even the final trailer mm -hmm. hardly glossed over these secrets there was no depths there was, there was no, no depths depth. the thing is the no, depths. there was only fire temple yes no the thing is the depths was there in the february trailer just one quick shot of like some boca blends mining zone night and we're like what is this this like we don't know what this is some people were like this is the underground and i was like i really hope it is the underground and then yes we did see the fire temple we saw some yes we did see the fire temple and that's the only part of the depths that we saw in that trailer and we did see like bits and pieces of all four of the dungeons but very vaguely and very faintly but then when you go in you play the game and you're like this was in the trailer this was in the trailer but there were teases and then you see that the whole depths is like massive and that's what got people talking online everyone's like yeah they hardly showed mm -hmm. anything in this game but that's what that's like the reason why you should buy this game or someone else should buy yeah. this game i i will absolutely applaud them on the depths hiding the depths and hiding the true extent that ultra hand can be used yeah. at play yeah um like i feel like they did a good job of showing the sky world and whatnot and the trailers yeah. and everything so i think that was all covered there but yeah uh lack of the 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 purposeful exclusion of the depths they didn't touch on story aspects all too much i'm, I'm glad that they kept yeah, those under wraps yeah. but and even the final trailer the story things we saw were very vague and not very mm -hmm. like yeah yeah so that was good there were lines from the final battle that were used out of context at the very start i know yeah even like in the february trailer that ganondorf line is a line from the final boss yeah which is cool yeah what a fight we can talk about that oh, as that yeah. too absolutely but um let's talk about mm -hmm. dlc stuff or dlc stuff because i will say my first week with this game i was enjoying it i played so much of this game the first week but when i realized that i was going and ex exploring the areas that were new i was exploring a lot of the depths in the first week and I was dying, I was getting lost, I was losing my hearts, but that's what mm -hmm. I found fun, because I was like, I want to explore the new stuff that wasn't yeah. even in the trailers. This is also new to me. And I was exploring the surface, because the surface had new stuff, like, with how your abilities worked in the surface. But I will say, that first week, I would try to go up to the Sky Islands, and I would always kind of get a little bored, because I was like, that's it? And, yeah and, and only yeah it's only just a handful of skylands have any sort of appeal to me which mm -hmm. is a shame to say um and it was for me, i wouldn't say it was mm -hmm. sad but i was like they marketed this so much the sky islands what am i supposed to do here and on top of that i had that small little doubt in my head i was like Gosh, if the depths didn't exist, if there's not much to do on the surface, if these arm abilities weren't in the games, then this could be DLC. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like, yeah. the thing is, I found more Sky Islands. There are more like interesting things to do later on in the game in the Sky Islands. Interesting puzzles, interesting ways to get up to new islands, all that. It was fun. But i was a little taken aback initially because i was hoping for like everyone has said this on discussions that i've heard everyone wanted more great sky island areas and stuff but what did you think about that i would i would absolutely not mind at least one or two more great sky islands um like esque buildings we needed more of those um sky islands for me i've seen they've i've tend to use them more as vantage points for seeing what's on the ground or using the um, using the 
Sheikah Towers to go up there. Um, yeah. The lookout points to go up there, then like use yeah. that to like help my trajectory down to mm -hmm. something I see on the surface. There's that. There's a few that are interesting. Like there's one all the way up in the north that's like this mini game sort of deal where you just glide right down and you get something for your troubles. Yeah, yeah. Um, those ones are all fine, but then the rest of them seem to delineate into like here's a platform that you can move around a little bit and it's got mm -hmm. like uh one of those uh, one of those gotcha machines yeah. for the parts and then right next to it is a construct fight yeah that's it yeah. uh so not those ones are are much less interesting or they just simply didn't have anything yeah. they're just like floating out around yeah like I at like least the like ones... some of them had a chest but... yeah mm -hmm. i like the ones where there's a flux construct at the bottom you have to defeat that flux construct and get that crystal all the way back to the top because yeah. i would always use the rockets and i would overshoot and i was like oh man now i can't like some of those the crystal. have been some of those have been absolutely fun i and will say yeah there were um the islands where you get the zonite set those are very cool because mm -hmm. you go through some very fun puzzles and stuff but other than that i will say the surface changes were interesting because they're adequate they're adequate yes. I'm, I'm quite i'm quite surprised um i like I, i'm surprised what they did with uh, elden region for example mm, they yeah. are at 90 percent of the lava you don't need to like have the gear out 24 7. Mm -hmm. uh the the little dune areas in the desert were a nice oh, touch. Oh, the desert was interesting because I had to save that to, for the end because I went there just to get one of the geoglyph memories. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, let, let's let's see what's around here. And I couldn't like explore the desert because there was quicksand and I didn't have enough stamina. So I was like, I have to yeah, come back later. I will like that they put elemental variances in three out of the four main areas that you had to go to. Mm -hmm. Um like the 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 freezing trek up to yeah. the Rito or like the mm -hmm. um the muck in the in the waters yeah yeah those were very ni those were nice touches um, yeah and I will say that. like speaking of the surface some of the new like I wouldn't say new areas but there are like within the time gap there are new settlements and new areas I was hoping for more but it's all right like look I'm out disappointed yeah. by the lack yeah. of them yeah like lookout landing like was there. And that was nice, but I was hoping that it would grow throughout your time there. Like, more people come, but it wasn't as developed. Yeah. Terrytown mm -hmm. was much nicer than in Breath of the Wild because it had time to, like, grow and flourish and all. Another example is, like, Mifa Court, because that was like, oh, that's cool. They yeah. made, like, a memorial for Mifa. But that one really yeah. that one really surprised me. That's yeah. actually the photo I took. I took a photo of the, the Mifa statue, and mm -hmm. that's the one in, in Link's house. Yeah. Which also makes me sad, Link's house. It's it's completely poor. It, it's, like, yeah. thrown last minute. I felt so, like, well, upset with that. Do you that. mean the Hiteno Village house or the Terrytown house? The Terrytown house. Mm -hmm. No, the Link's, the Link's actual home. I, I quite enjoy. I love I love mm -hmm. the details in that one. Yeah. Um, but, but uh, what for are, me yeah yeah mm -hmm. what are you saying uh, so I, I was just gonna like touch up on like some of like the sequel versus non -sequel oh stuff, no th though. that's exactly what i was gonna ask um, you like what other dlc things did you notice okay uh well i first off i will say about the depths fantastic i love it i love that it offers this, uh, a much oh yeah greater sense of difficulty exploration navigation you gotta find everything uh there's quite a little too many of the light nodes that you have to uncover for it to be more traversable but i quite enjoy that yeah. there's it's like a sense of anxiety because you're just always surrounded in the yeah. dark i love that and just <laughs> just monsters you've never yeah. seen before I or just it. like souped up monsters will just pop right out yeah um but yeah like the depths was fantastic i still have like 50 percent of it to explore on oh, my yeah. run alone yeah I, and i've done you know what i realized about the depths mm -hmm. is even though i got all the light routes i didn't like explore a lot of the areas because yeah there are things you can do in the depths like there are coliseums there are like mm -hmm. hideouts like yiga hideouts i haven't gotten all of those but i have gotten a good handful of them but at, near the end of the game i'm like hey i want to move on to other games like i'm enjoying yeah. this game i love this game but i want to move on and well, i i would just hop from light route to light route but yeah what were you saying i think a part of that also is the the non-essentiality of the depths hmm, in terms yeah. of like the 
you're there's only few points within the game like obviously the main story towards the end you're prompted to go to a specific section of the depths <laughs> or, and again at the very also at the very start but beyond that death exploration is completely left up to the player yeah if they want to do that you know they have um they have like the uh non-tarnished weaponry yeah from the, the ghost to the soldiers so th those are a good reason to go there um the pose to exchange pose yeah uh, which and, i quite enjoyed that yeah. whole um that whole uh mission under the great plateau it oh, irked me a little bit yeah. because some of the eyes kept despawning on me and i had to, i had to like go back a few times mm. but uh we have, got have there you seen that fine. clip of someone throwing down the eyes and then link and dies in bounces. and it bounces and it hits him it oh, bounces off the corridor and just hits yeah. kills him yeah but um yeah. and then there's just nice touches like the dragons going in in some of the crevices and they go under there the first time i saw that i was like and then uh <laughs> the fact that we could climb those dragons too you know you know I scale them. literally okay so the game came out thursday night on saturday saturday mm -hmm. morning i was just playing the game and i was on like some random sky island and i saw farosh just flying and i was like oh let's let's go towards him and i was flying and gliding and he was by one of the chasms and he went down i was like that's not like supposed to happen is this a glitch like what's going on and then i dive in with him and the game starts to like, I wouldn't say lag, but I don't know if this has happened to you if you're diving into a chasm with a dragon, but sometimes the game needs to load a bit. So I'm like, is this happening? Is he just going to like stay here stationary for a while? Mm -hmm. But he went farther and farther and farther. And I just, I didn't have very much stamina, but I was able to glide and fly with him for like 20 minutes. And that's one of the greatest things I've ever done yeah. in the game. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah, like I was on, I was on which one was? I think it was also Farosh. I was on yeah. one of them, and it was just, uh, or it was a Nydra. I think it was Nydra, mm -hmm. and we just went down, and I was just on his back for like fifteen minutes, yeah. and then I used the opportunity while I was up there to put waypoints on all the light routes that I saw. Yeah. Oh yeah, so that was a good idea. Did. Yeah. And, and, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um. That's sort of where my praises have to end mm -hmm. because, oh no, there's one more thing. Uh, the amount of um, quests, the amount of side quests. Yeah, the side and adventures. That, that goes, that goes really to an extent. Um, there's more side adventures. Um, there's definitely more things to do in all of the areas, which is always fun to see, like a variety wise even. There's more mini games as well. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if you've seen them all, but like or like found oh, them all, but yeah. there's like easily like a, about a dozen or so. How mini games what, what mini games are there? I might have missed some of them. Um, there's one on the way to the Rito Village. That's you got to ultra hand like uh, a Goron and is gonna throw boulders at you, <laughs> and you gotta like ultra hand them and th <laughs> and throw them back into a cart. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, there's the diving ones to get the diving suits. Yes, I've done There's those, a hunting yeah. one. Um, there's there's honestly quite a few um, and I've just I've just truly really enjoyed them yeah um, so I will always like even if like you get them once and there there's not like a piece of heart or something waiting for them but there's like some rupees there's some like gear rewards those are pretty nice yeah I, I don't think um, anything will beat like the Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask Wind Waker mini games Oh, the Wind Waker ones were. My yeah, favorite. those are timeless. Yeah, I would yeah. spend hours and hours doing those just to get that one single heart piece. The mailbox or one always haunts me yeah. so much. Yeah. That one, that one really annoys the crap out of me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I will praise that, but that's where it sort of ends because mm -hmm. outside of those main hubs, which have seen those substantial differences and the new quests, like I'm still barreling through like the Gerudo quests because there's mm -hmm. so many in the Gerudo town. Yeah. Um, that's sort of where it ends because stables ends up being predictable. There's mm -hmm. one quest that's a photo. There's one quest where for the Gazette where it's like, oh, what's going on here? Is it Zelda? It's like, oh no, it's not Zelda. Yeah, that's like I like the pen quest, but in hindsight, they're a little disappointing because uh, that also has to do with the plot of the game, which we'll get into a little later. But yeah. I was expecting these princess sightings to be like hey like I, I expected the stakes to be a little higher but they're just like 
oh, I lost my goats and like Zelda had to do something with it. But what I kind of liked about those is you get to hear what Zelda's personality is like uh, from mm -hmm. the villagers and like the people, the residents of Hyrule. They're like, oh, Zelda taught me this recipe. Zelda told me this. Zelda told us to do this. And hearing that was interesting, but just the way it all panned out was a little weird, but it was nicer than a lot of the Breath of the Wild quests. Yeah, but then after that, it just sort of was like, okay, you got the pen quests, you got the main ones. Uh, I think the best the best quests for me were some of, what, what was it, the, uh, the Terrytown quests? Because yeah. then you see Addison, and then oh, Addison that hints so that there's like, Addison hints that like there's seven or eight years mm -hmm. um, difference between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, it's weird. Which, because... which then annoys me because you'd think with an eight year difference, Link and Zelda and other characters would look a lot different. But yeah. No. There's a lot of weird time inconsistencies. Some of the Hateno mm -hmm. Village kids don't look. I mean, they look older, but they don't look as older. And you look as at. Old, yeah. You look at Addison and. If there is a five-year gap, then she should be like five years. But she doesn't if there, act or look five years. She looks a little older than that. But I don't know. If yeah. there, if Addison did not exist as a character, I think we would feel a lot more secure that this was like yeah. okay, maybe like a two-year gap or something. Yeah. But it's like it's hard to ignore that character because it's like, okay, well, so we're at least seven or eight years in the future. Everyone still looks the same. Not all too much has been done. I was hoping for more regions, like maybe another additional town beyond just Lookout Landing, because Lookout Landing is very nice. It's you know um, where the uh, where the four divine uh, beast guardians all pledged to Zelda. A lot of people didn't yeah, take up on yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so they like deforested that little area and planted over the fountain, mm -hmm. um, but uh, which is nice. But I would have hoped to have seen a little bit more. Um, I really loved Lurlin Village. I loved the oh, Lurlin yeah. Village side quests. Yeah. Um. So that one was that one was that one was a little yeah. disappointing because like it was nice that you got to rebuild it after like saving them from the from the pirates. <laughs> but yeah, I I I found... I was hoping we'd have had some humanoids. I, I was hoping for like human opponents, like yeah. Hylian, like Hylian pirates, mm -hmm. not just more Boblicans, but yeah, um, they did do a fair bit better on monster diversity, like the mm. Horriblins, the Aracudas, um, Aracudas, the monsters in the depths. Like mm -hmm. there's still like some monster varieties, like I just haven't seen in the game yet. Yeah, like that can be believed. Uh, they did a lot better with mini bosses. I've still yet to fight and kill a Gleok, for I example. I think you should try it. It's, I need it's to try. So I, I approached the Thunder Gleok and it just one shot me. So I was like, okay, not yet. Not yet. The Gleoks um, are some of the most fun encounters I've ever had in this game. And yeah. it really elevates, like, I personally think that the Gleoks are harder than any of the Lynels. And they're harder than any of the bosses in Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, comparing it to well, the final it's... boss is tough, but I don't know about that yet. For, for, for the Lionels, we know how Lionels play out. We yeah. know their we know their move set from Breath of the Wild, and this leads me into the next problem. You know, Link has all these tool that he has the tools with Ultra Hand and Fuse and whatnot. But as a base character himself. Link plays 100% the exact same that he played out in Breath of the Wild. And yes. I don't enjoy that. I yeah. don't enjoy the fact that I'm like, oh, some people will enjoy that. Like they're fine with like playing the exact same character, but yeah. I would have hoped for like alternative move sets or maybe like new web, new, um, new combos with yeah. opponents that you fought in the past. Like the Lionels would have been, would yeah. have been more appropriate. Yeah, rather we, than ju just we just have the monster. same move sets, the same weapon types and the same, flurry rushing. Music, the same combat music. Yeah. Like, I, have combat you seen music have is you slightly seen remixed, but not that much. Have you seen cattail on Twitter? What they're doing? Um, I don't they think... are cattail on Twitter. They are modding the game. Oh, to get new with, music in there, right? Xenoblade. No, they're putting in Xenoblade. Yes, music I saw all that. Xenoblade games. I saw the Lefteria one. The Lefteria one was so amazing. It fits 100%. Yeah. It absolutely fits. And it's just so 
it's like I was okay with the music in Tears. It's a little more and in, that in pronounced in Tears compared to Breath of the Wild, which I quite enjoyed. But even then, like it's just like we were robbed out of some pretty beautiful moments by them choosing to go minimalist on the music. I will say not that minimalism yeah. has not that minimalism doesn't have a role, but I mean it's this it's so strong and still so mm -hmm. prevalent even in tears yeah. that it it's it it's detracting a yeah. bit still. I mm -hmm. um I am one of the people who actually really likes the minimalist music because I think it fits the vibe, but I will say this. I watched a handful of reviews before the game. I watched like Skill Ups review, Nintendo Life's review, Game Explains review, and one other person's review. I can't remember whose, but that was about it. Every single one of them said the music is a lot better. I highly disagree. <laughs> the music is literally about the same. And it's the same quality. It's yeah, not... it's the same quality. It's the same impact that it's had on me. I highly disagree. And it's not that the music is bad. The Colgara music is amazing. The dungeon music is amazing. The boss music is amazing. But like Breath of the Wild had the same kind of music. And mm -hmm. like they, I will say, I, I I will also tell this to the viewers. Like, I, I, I'm sure Yggdrasil enjoyed this game. I enjoyed this game as well. But this spoiler cast, we're just dissecting a lot of it. So we're being very, very critical. And like, we I, have to be critical. Yeah. And, and we're I not even, saying that we don't enjoy the game, yeah, but yeah. we do have to point out, it's we, we have to point oh, yeah. out points of contest. Yeah, this is, it's only fair. this is still shaping up to be one of my favorite games of all time by the way mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll 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 talk about that later but i will say back to like the music stuff i uh, yeah music and story we can delve into story a little bit but you really kind of think sometimes like model of soft works on these games and like mm -hmm. Of course, like the people who do story and music for Monolith Soft aren't the people doing work for Tears of the Kingdom. Like Mitsuda's not working on Zelda, Takahashi's not working on Zelda, and all that. But like, yeah, no, they're at most they're working on on programming and yeah, some coding, world issues. design, programming, optimization, all that. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes just wish like like that Monolith Soft energy is there with the world, the exploration, all that that next zelda game has got to have that story that narrative that dialogue that music uh, from xenoblade like oh my god like people it keep definitely saying, needs narrative yeah and like people keep saying oh i miss story in zelda i miss music in zelda my first thing is i tell them go back and play skyward sword skyward sword has all of it, it everything all of it. it has story music characters all of it and then if you like Skyward Sword, and if you like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, try Xenoblade Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine Skyward Sword, Skyworld, but with more islands like Great Island from Tears. Yeah. I know, think that would be yeah. that might that would be my only complaint yeah. with Skyward Sword. But we're not talking about Skyward Sword. We're talking about but Tears, real but, quick about Skyward um, Sword, mm -hmm. very real quick tangent. I don't know about you, but after playing Xenoblade 2, Skyward's and going back and playing Skyward Sword, it kind of reminds me of that game in some ways. You think so? Like the Cloud Sea vibes and the whatnot? Cloud Sea vibes, the romance, the music, all of that. It's just. Yeah, amazing. no, I can, I can feel that. I can feel yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, let's talk about the story. What do you, what do you think? Um, secret stones? <laughs> imprisoning war? Well, I will say. The story is better than Breath of the Wild, significantly better. Mm -hmm. Some moments had my jaw on the floor, had me tearing up, had me very hyped, but I made a video <laughs> before Tears of the Kingdom came out, and it's it, I don't remember the title. It was like, this is my biggest fear for Tears of the Kingdom. Like, It was like, Tears of the Kingdom better not make the same mistake that Breath of the Wild did, and it made it. It like, absolutely man. Yeah, throughout <laughs> throughout the game, I was trying to deny it. I was like, "Oh no, it'll get better. It'll get better." And then what you happened? You never want you never want to feel. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. You never want to feel. And this happened with me after I saw that first cutscene. I was like, "Okay," and then it repeated. 
then every time I saw that cutscene and I knew what to expect and I knew where to expect that cutscene, <laughs> I legit just walked away from the couch and I just went and did other things. Yeah. And that's something that no one ever wants to have to do for yeah. a main story. You know what's kind of sad like, though? Going to look away. Is yeah. the Riju cutscene where the Secret Stone Demon King, I was scrolling through Twitter, so I missed it. And then my friend texts me like a week later. He's like, hey dude, I just did the Spirit Temple and the dialogue is a little different because they mentioned that Ganondorf is a Gerudo. And I was like, dang, I missed it. And like, hmm. that's also me for scrolling through Twitter. But also like, the reason I scroll through Twitter is because I was expecting the same whole yeah. thing again. I did notice that as well. But that's, that's it's just one line. And yeah. like, I'm glad they at least mentioned, acknowledged that for the Gerudo. But my goodness. Yeah, like, it, it, just, it was silly. It was silly because... I remember everyone, when they beat the Wind Temple, most people did the Wind Temple first. Because my friend yeah, was same. like, hey man, like, I was talking to him on Discord and he was like, oh, I gotta go. Like, they're talking about lore. And I was like, oh, we get lore after the Wind Temple? Oh my god, I'm so excited. And, like, even some creators on Twitter were like, oh my god, the cutscene after the Wind Temple was so emotional. And it was great. It was nice hearing the Rito Sage talk to Tula and all that. But mm -hmm. then I did the Sidon one next. I did the Unova one next, and I was like, uh... It was but all the same. Here's the thing. The f thing that I was mentioning about Tears of the Kingdom better not do this thing from Breath of the Wild, for me, that was the memories and the non-linear storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say this. Linear storytelling in the present, that's what I wanted with this game. We actually did get that. I'll get into that a little later. The memories, I will say, the memories were good. The memories were directed well, written well, acted well. The scenario, the cutscenes, all that was great. But what kind of killed it for me was one, it was like happening in the past. Whatever, it's. Yeah, um, it was I nice think that. The, it, yeah? I, I think the memories of Breath of the Wild were better than the memories of Tears of the Kingdom. Interesting. I want to hear your thoughts honor. on that, but. Mm -hmm. The thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, so to speak, was, <laughs> I mean, of course, this is spoilers, but maybe the third memory I got, like, I was like, hey, let me go to Luralin Village, I'll see what's over there, and I, I got destroyed by the monster, so I was like, oh, there's a geoglyph there, let me... Oh, the scimitar one, yeah, yeah I know the it, one. Literally, I saw Sonya's death, like, maybe, like less than 20 hours into the game that was, was my like, second that was my second yeah, one dude it was like my <laughs> so second I, or third i was like it's it's like oh hi oh look at how it's look i love her yeah. design look at i was yeah. like oh my god yeah it was it was weird i was like and i there are many people who are like oh here's how they could have done it better and yeah they could have done it better in some ways but also i think to myself like one part of the geoglyphs, the whole idea is like the glyphs are supposed to show what that scene, like what is happening in that scene. Mm -hmm. Like the one where Sonya dies is the dagger. The one yeah. where Zelda finds a sword is the master sword. The one where they talk to Minoru is the Pura Pad. So like it makes sense, but at the same time, I'm like, this game, if you're encouraging non-linearity, people are going to get the geoglyphs out of order. And you know what's the funniest thing oh, yeah. ever? Mm -hmm. The funniest thing ever is after Impa said, oh, the geoglyphs, Dragon Tears, meet me in the uh, Forgotten Temple. I didn't even do that. I was so excited to see all the cutscenes because like Zelda oh, yeah. lore, Zelda story. I went to all the geoglyphs. I did them out of order and I didn't even go to the Forgotten Temple until... I went to the Forgotten Temple after I got the very final memory of seeing Zelda being the Light Dragon, and I went to the Forgotten Temple, and Impa was like, Hey Link, look what's behind this door, and then I see, like, I was like, oh, okay. It's like, uh, um, how do I tell you this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then right after that, I was like, hey, Impa, I got all the memories, and she's like, oh, and I was like, yeah, well, I want to know what you think about the memories and why Breath of the Wilds were better, according to you. I think with honest, all honesty, I think it might just have to do with the um, the lore and setup for Tears as opposed to Breath of the Wild. Because Retcons. <laughs> Retcons. Like, 
imprisoning war and then it's like okay where are the divine beasts like i can understand them using the the guardians uh it's like disassembling the guardians to create the towers yeah. i were buying into that but it's like there's really none of them remaining there's only like very vague hints of the divine beasts like the gear the headgear yeah. if you've done like any the, of those the continuity is weird um, it's a little the weird. Continuity is weird it doesn't like okay so there's zero mention of calamity ganon whatsoever um so it's it's like the imprisoning war then the age of sheikah or or like then the calamity yeah. and then it goes into the actual event and then a hundred years and then we're not and it's, it's like very ugh. with breath of the wild um it's just the age of the sheikah the divine beasts and then the calamity occurs and then you're just witnessing what happens in the calamity so i feel like i think that just might be it also mm -hmm. i i just don't like the geoglyphs mm -hmm. like i i think they're just like too jarring on the map i, I, I kind of like... liked it because like you, yeah. you get shot out into a tower and then you see a geoglyph and then you mark it and then you're like i'm gonna go there i i appreciate that don't get me wrong but i feel like it's like i mean i do that already with the with yeah. the um with the uh shrines yeah um, the reason i liked it is because it was a better way to find the memories than just going based off of the camera pictures see but i quite like that yeah. one to be honest like like yeah. that one like encouraged encouraged more sorry about that dogs that one encouraged more vast exploration mm -hmm. as opposed to um simply just like looking and seeing where it could be yeah yeah um, you had to be aware of your surroundings as well yeah, like there was one uh, in Breath of the Wild right outside of the um, Kakariko village mm -hmm. that like I walked past several times before yeah. I realized it. Yeah. And I quite enjoyed it. Um, I don't think they did enough for Kakariko in Tears either. They no, didn't because, that. oh boy, here's what I wanted from Kakariko village. Because, oh my god. <laughs> I... I, I liked what they did with this game, but mm -hmm. I liked the whole setup of this game. The way things were executed could have been done better, and one good example of that is the whole Zonai Survey Corps. Because when you go to Kakariko, it took me a while to find it, and I was like, oh my god, there's like a giant ring there, everything mm -hmm. is like messed up, and like Zelda like is there and she like tells them don't go into the ring. And you think early in the game, you're like, oh my god, like, if you go into the ring, like, what's gonna happen? Like, I thought some, like, really bad stuff was gonna happen. Yeah, and, and then it just turns out to be gating. Yeah, and, like, oh my god, every time I wanted to climb out of Kakariko Village, the guy would be like, don't go to the ring! God. And I was like, dude, I'm just climbing here. But the really sad thing was once you uncover that Zelda is an imposter, and that it's Puppet Ganon, everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, um, Link, can you go up to the ring? And I'm like, you, what I wanted was I wanted you to originally go to Kakariko. There's nothing there. And maybe after two regional phenomenon are completed, then uh, Puppet don't Zelda like yeah. drops the ring and goes down and is like, oh, don't, don't go to the ring. Puppet Zelda really disappointed me. It's yeah. It's being like, yeah, the Zelda sightings, but it's it's literally just one Phantom Ganon that's puppeteering absolutely all over Hyrule. And I'm just like, at least I wish they made that like a subservient secondary character, like um, like Twinrova. Yeah, yeah. Or like a, a like a devout follower of Ganondorf. That's like yeah. It, it was cool that like, Phantom Ganon is back because, like, back, us yeah. classic Zelda fans remember Phantom Ganon from Ocarina and Twilight Princess and all that. The first, fan, the first time I saw the the arms, yeah. and then and then I like I finally this happened to me in the Great Deku Tree yeah. when I finally killed that my first cool, arm. Yeah, and then I had my first experience with Phantom Ganon, and I freaked out. That was so cool. Like, I, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, that. There are some really awesome moments in this game. The Deku Tree was one of them because you go into Korok mm. Forest and you're like, oh my god, this 
this doesn't seem real and what's cool is in breath of the wild to get into the korok forest you have to go through the lost woods you have to hold a torch like what i had to do is holding a torch so that the embers show you the way to go right that's how oh, I. Zoe, yeah. mm -hmm. what were you saying no go on no basically yeah that's how i did it in breath of the wild but yeah in tears of the kingdom what you have to do is you have to go into the chasm and then ascend up there so that was awesome first of all ascending yeah, up into the forest out, was amazing out, was but then i was kind of stupid and i didn't realize they had to go inside of the deku three get deku tree's mouth to like or the deku tree's stomach to find phantom ganon but then when i found it i defeated him and it was great but i will say um back to the memories real quick i want to hear your quick thoughts on just raru sonia zonai uh we f <laughs> zonai are confirmed but not in the way that we thought that they would be yeah. i still like it i'm coming to terms with all of it because it's very very different from what i imagined it to be i'm i'm disappointed with zonai lore okay like they're all like zonai technology and look what this can do and then it's like the secret stones and then like i summoned five secret stones from the the okay. heavens as like the zonai like the zonai came from the heavens and there's only like two remaining um at the I wish time there was more lore. Was found. i wish yeah. there was more lore because it's all that's very literally all the lore that's literally all the lore yeah. it's like it came down and then they were they were brought with them gifts called as the secret stones that just amplified divine power yeah. they were like ones and eight abilities um and like that's all the zone i lore you get and it's like compared to like a lot more of the lore of like say twilight princess like with the uoka like i feel like we know a fair bit like it's it's really hard mm -hmm. uh, like weird to say but i feel like i know more lore about the uoka than I do about Zonai. You know? I think I think there's still more Zonai lore, like especially when looking into um, some side quests pertaining to like uh, King Raru and Queen Sonia, uh, looking into Minoru and what all she's done, and there are some more Zonai lore implications. But at the same time, for me, my problem was. It was nothing like what I thought it would be at all. We thought the Zonai were barbarians. They're not barbarians. They're like, they're animal people. And yeah. it's it's fine. Like, it's subversion okay. of expectations, which is okay, and it's fine. But this is far from... I like the... Yeah? I, I like their designs. I wish I would Oh, I love their designs. I love their designs. Too. Yeah. Yeah. The construct designs are nice yeah. for one. I on. I think <laughs> um their whole technology, their magic is cool. I just still have a lot of questions and not a lot of them were answered. I'm hoping some of it is answered in the DLC, but we'll see about that. Yeah. I, I'm I, surprised they didn't do the DLC uh, announcement at for, the Nintendo for Direct. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll get it. Maybe they wanted maybe they wanted more time for people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll definitely be out at the Game Awards, I'm sure. Like what they did oh, for yeah. Breath of the Wild. But I, I I liked Raru and Sonya. I liked the characters. I liked their interactions with Zelda and all that. I really liked it all, but... Uh, I don't even know if we have time to go into this, but the lore implications and the timeline stuff and the continuity and the retcons, I'm still wrapping my head around it because... At first, I was telling myself, this game is even the memories, even the memories of Raru and Sonia and Zelda. I was like, I was pretty much set in my mind. This takes place after all of the timelines and before Breath of the Wild. But after looking more into it, people are starting to think, oh, this all this happens after Skyward Sword and before Minish Cap. And hmm. it is very conflicting. You can't, look at this, you can't look at this game in the time, in the traditional timeline anymore. The thing is, some theories I've seen make sense, but it is also like, a lot of it makes sense and it can make sense if you really wrap your head around it, but also it's just Nintendo saying, we're, we're done with this timeline 
and yeah. the thing is it makes sense it makes sense that nintendo wants to move on nintendo wants to be done with this but for people like us who i mean i i got into the zelda series by looking up timeline theories that's what got me into the series yeah like all the timeline lore before the timeline was officially announced that's like all of zelda youtube back like 10 15 years ago it was all just timeline theories and it was so much fun and now to have it all like and then the official timeline came out and everyone was like wow it's actually real and all the content and people started like the discussions and now it just seems like Nintendo is just throwing it out and it's it's mm -hmm. fine it's whatever it's it's understandable just, just it's, don't no no more secret stone crap don't give us like oh look at this like at least with like I'm surprised that they went with something called the Secret Stones yeah. over a reintroduction of the Triforce. Where is the Triforce? They, yeah. I like... was thinking, I was thinking because like they're in fragments and I was like thinking maybe the Secret Stones would be in the same vein as Wind Waker where Link has to collect the Secret Stones and it's like, oh, they're actually like, they're actually part of a Triforce, which makes sort of sense. Triforce because of Courage or something. Stone, the Secret Stones came down literally from the heavens along with the Zonai. Um, it's so weird. that, yeah. no implications of the goddesses at all. Yeah. Um, save, save the, save, save um, Hylia again. Mm -hmm. um, and the nod, I mean, the Zonai the are the gods nod. now, it looks like. Yeah. And like, they're pretty much like the closest thing to the, go to the gods yeah uh, as far as it can go um with that said against the gods was demise and what a wonderful fight that was and i think this final fight that this game had rivals that actually did you see I'm, my tweet did you see I'm the tweet i made today you, you said you I, I think on your tweet you said it surpasses the, the tears of the kingdom fight surpasses um, demise. No, not only does it surpass demise, not only is it my favorite final boss of all time, this might just be my favorite boss fight in all video games. Yeah. And that's crazy that I'm saying that, but th that that's truly what I think. It, it was built up very well because mm -hmm. you see Ganondorf in the memories, you encounter Phantom Ganon throughout the world, he's like chasing you with the gloom hands. So that's really cool. Yeah. You encounter him in Hyrule Castle and seeing him face to face with that like skeleton Ganondorf, I was like, I kind of hope that skeleton Ganondorf comes back. And he did in that form. And he like talks down to the sages. He's like, I am here and I will crush you. And this is what I'll do. And I was like, that's cool. That's that is a moment that I love because I was like, this is the moment that I wanted. This is a moment that I wanted in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And I got it and I loved it. I savored that moment. I loved it so much. And then you approach the final boss, you go deeper and deeper and deeper into Hyrule Castle and it gets more messed up and crazy and the music gets weirder and you're there's more gloom. Around. Yeah? You, and you're just thrown around and you're trying to like just bypass everything. Yeah. You're trying to reserve, reserve your health as best yeah. you can. I quite like that. Yeah. Um, I, when I started the final fight, after all the gloom and I realized I couldn't teleport back. Yeah. I had only seven hearts to my name and I haven't been up I didn't upgrade my gear nearly as well as I could have I probably only had 15 to 18 defense or something okay. like that so like two or three hits that, and I was done. that was you going into the final boss that was me going to the final boss how would you fare and I I spent two hours on that fight up until the point where I started um perfecting it and in the <laughs> final clear of that fight i took no damage because oh, wow because nice i learned I, because i it was it was it was like you see everything that he throws at you you learn how to overcome it you like reflecting the abilities when to do the dodges um my favorite really cool. thing ever, i i i have the, i had the roughest time when he wielded the sword yeah but my favorite part about that fight was how he holds the sword 
for a few moments before he strikes dictates how he's going to swing the sword, whether he's mm. going to do a vertical or horizontal ah. slice. And that dictated how you dodged to get the perfect dodge. My friend, who is a massive From Software fan, massive fan of like Dark Souls, Elden Ring, he came back to me and he's like, dude, Nintendo took notes from From Software for this. And I was like, they most certainly did. Yeah. My, my, I, I have to say my only disappointment is the end of the final fight just turns into more of a cinematic. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's such a times, glorious cinematic. It's, it's 10 times a better cinematic than Breath of the Wild by oh, far. Oh, 100%, by far. yeah. 100%. There, you I, act, I just love you how he has you in his jaws as he's coming out of the castle. He has you in his jaws. That's so cool. I thought that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Zelda's actual sacrifice and everything she endured was great, was fantastic. But yeah. that's really the only, that's really the only main aspects of this story of mm -hmm. Tears of the Kingdom that I can truly appreciate because everything else just evolves into um, after you've seen it once, you know what to expect. Yeah. The same thing can be said of like all the four little snubs, like when you go to all the different zones and you're like, I think that's Zelda. Oh, Zelda wants us to go here. It's yeah. like it's something to do with the princess, and yeah. then none of them, none of them was like. And no one questions, hey, why is Zelda acting like? I mean, they question why is Zelda acting like this, but yeah, like, did it, you? It's kinda, yeah. Did, yeah. Did you like any of the other main bosses? I loved because... Kogera. I loved Kogera. That was amazing. Yeah. That's one of my favorite bosses. I loved it so much. Mukdarok was okay. I could I didn't like Mukdarok. It was, it I was think... the, I, the thing I liked about Mukdarok is it reminded me of a classic 3D Zelda boss, and I was like, yeah, that's the vibe I like, but it was annoying as heck to fight that thing. It's an annoying, it's a very annoying yeah. fight. I think I think I'm with you on the same boat. Well, actually. Um, I found them all easy, like really yeah. easy, which is like fine. I Even appreciated Queen that. Gibdo, them... Everyone's like Queen Gibdo so hard. I can't fight this boss. I beat it Queen so easily. Gibdo, Queen Gibdo was more annoying than it was hard yeah. because it, because of just the sandstorms and like every now and then like you miss the lightning. Bolt and you have to like running that. up to Riju and being like, hey, help me out here. Yeah. Yeah. You have to like tell Riju what to do. It's like, well, I still love Riju. I think Riju is my favorite. Oh. Real quick, going back to story, but the lead up to these regional phenomenon were they're all relatively good. I, I like them yeah. all. They're pretty good. The Gerudo lead up was fantastic. The Gerudo it lead was... up and and the um uh oh, the not the Rito. The Zora. Yeah, that was Those pretty two cool were too. My favorite. Those two were my favorite lead ups. Yeah, I have some issues with the Zora storyline. Maybe we can get into that later if you have some time. But wow, that Gerudo lead up, I loved it. It was basically like, <laughs> I wouldn't, I, I don't want to say it's like its own game, but it, like, no, that, that's not a good way to say it. it. It was like, it felt very like separated from the rest of the game, if that makes sense. Cause it no, felt, it felt that. very different, and I was like, I kind of wish that the other lead ups were like this. Yeah, it yeah. was it was really no, fun. I can get that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but um, I I will have to say I enjoyed, I I did enjoy that all of the bosses brought back nostalgic factors yeah. of the previous games. Playing through them was too simplistic. I got really like sad about the end of the Fire Temple boss. Dude, uh, I beat that. I the that Marble Goma, I beat it in like less than two minutes. It was so yeah, right? easy. I was so... And it's, like, <laughs> it's like, I understand you can go about it different ways, but I'm just like, it's like, it's pretty straightforward. You know what to do. All of these fights have to deal with you using the powers of like the main ones anyway. Yeah. Or the, 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 the sages anyway. So it just felt very straightforward. I will say, I enjoyed Marbled Goma more in the depths with the rematch because mm -hmm. he was actually harder in that because in the fire temple it's like a circular yeah room. you have you have a safe you have a little kitty safety yeah going on. whereas you don't have that in the depths, so it's a lot it's a little bit harder in the depths so i i enjoyed it more in the depths but overall i love the boss fights and like kogera was fun 
Muck Rock was alright. Marble Goma was alright. Better in the depths. Queen Gibdo was fun. Phantom Ganon was fun. Ah, uh, Seize Construct. That was f funny. I, will, I, I don't know if I would say it's fun. It was funny. Because <laughs> I was... Seize Construct reminded me... It, it's very funny. Seize Construct reminded me of a SpongeBob SquarePants fight. Because yeah. Battle for Bikini Bottom, yeah. like, the very first... <laughs> The very first big boss is just a mecha, mecha Sandy in in the uh, in an uh, electrified yeah. arena, uh, and that's yeah. all I could think of. That's all I could think <laughs> of in that funny. fight. It was just a joke fight. Yeah, yeah. like it was all right, but it was whatever. Um, I was hoping Spirit Temple was really its own temple rather than just this array of like four puzzles. I hated the Construct Factory, kind of. I it, did not like it. The, I, I, there were two puzzles I was okay. Uh, there was two puzzles I was okay with, and then the other two puzzles was more just annoying. It's yeah. like, yeah, I realize it. I know what we have to do. It's just time consuming and annoying. You know what I did for all of it? I did the Ultra Hand Recall trick. So I would like ultra hand as far as I could and then I would go on the other side and recall and I would like I'm gonna catch it I'm gonna catch it and then I caught it and I was yeah. like ha ah. No, that's what I did at some point at some point there were parts where I literally just picked up the part I held it up over the exit. Mm -hmm. Sorry if you can hear my my dog. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, oh, thank god um, I uh, I held the part over the exit and then I would just um, Ascend into the part yeah. oh. And then like climb up real fast so i was still holding then i would recall the part so it would go back to floating and then Whoa. just pick up the part there and i've done that for a few of yeah. even like the regular shrines okay. like like some of these shrines like i will applaud that the fact that like it's like if you can do it you can do it if you yeah. know what to do you know the strats like i'm sure you saw that one shrine that's all about um that's all about like uh using the rails and whatnot yeah, and yeah. then some someone comes in with like five bombs and three rocket shields yeah. and they just cruise through it in like five yeah. seconds so i applaud them yeah. for really doing that kind of stuff i actually really enjoy for example the shrines where they remove your gear entirely oh yeah and oh they, my god there's they one of those fight. that just oh, i could not do it there was one of them that i it took me a good yeah. solid attempt because for the longest time i was ignoring health for stamina hmm and I was oh, like, well, okay, health yeah. is health. I can work around these things. So it's just like, you know, learn the game. Don't get hit. I can I can deal with it. And I just got thrashed. But eventually I started turning these like, you don't have any gear. Kill X amount. Kill all these people. I started turning it into like speed runs. It's like, how fast could I like, go about these? Get all the equipment, fuse everything in like mm -hmm. a way that would yeah. be optimal. And then just go about it. And I quite yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, the number one strength that Tears of the Kingdom has um and this was again the same way in breath of the wild but much more so in tears the number one strength that tears of the kingdom has is it allows for player ingenuity and player player creativity um problem solving um rationale arms. exactly so yeah 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 um but everything yeah all of that playing into it um makes you feel uh more rewarded for having uh approached a question approached a scenario and then it's like well this is how i would go about it let's test it and it work if it works great you feel good like yeah. even when you're making the most simple design constructs you're making like no like i could be making this plane with a control stick and two fans like over and over and over again but i'm quite content every time i physically make it yeah. you know yeah you, you're satisfied with the things you accomplish in the game because you don't know if it can work, but when it does work, you're just mind blown. But yeah. on that, that, yeah. That being said, yeah. sorry, I, I I will say one more time. That being said, I don't want another Tears of the Kingdom game. I want to go back to a traditional yeah. Zelda. Uh, I, I think, I, I I think have we're bad burnt news out. For you there. It's gonna I, hold, isn't it? I, I, I saw that I poll of yours. I saw that poll in that direction. It's sad. Of it's sad. The thing is, I I had a video that like really blew up, like. I got a lot of traction on it. It was like, mm -hmm. I was asking the question. I was like, are we ever going to go back to a traditional Zelda? And <laughs> as a silly, lot of people didn't want it. As silly as it sounds, as I was editing that video, I got a little emotional because I was hearing the Twilight Princess music and I was like, what if this 
what if this is gone forever right? <laughs> and like that that made me really go back to like newcomers and tell people i'm like guys if you if you want this kind of game then please for the love of god stop bullying skyward sword and buy it and play it and play like twilight princess and wind waker and like understand where mm -hmm. this series was and everyone says breath of the wild harkens back to zelda one it is zelda one yes it is in very many ways it is and it's great and it works and it is successful and the sales indicate that they and aonuma has said that they most likely don't want to go back to the original zelda because it's restricting yeah. and all that but these games exist if it wasn't for wind waker majora's mask twilight princess ocarina of time skyward sword all that we wouldn't be here so like to the newcomers it's great that you love zelda but like I, I i i don't the thing is i i made that video and some people in the comments thought of it as kind of gatekeeping they're like oh you can't be a zelda fan unless you play all these games and i'm like no no you can play whatever you want if you enjoy only open air that's totally fine it, they're really good games but if you're if you want to know more about like why us fans like me and Yggdrasil feel this way give the other games a shot and Absolutely. maybe you will understand why some of us well we'll, we'll get into this a little bit because yeah I want to talk real quick about the dungeons and shrines, but like when it comes to Skyward Sword, those dungeons are I I still think like no one some can, of the best yeah some no of the one best. can ancient cistern yeah exactly my ancient, my God, cistern. ancient yeah. cistern yeah yeah like no one can convince me otherwise Skyward Sword has probably the best dungeons in the series it had not one not just one but two good fire temples yes yes you know I know I like no other Zelda game can say that yeah. come on. I, I don't uh, think Skyward Sword had a bad dungeon. Like, if you look at all of them, there are some of the better ones, some of the worst ones, but none of them were bad. I think yeah. at most, I think my biggest complaint with dungeons in Skyward Sword was that half of the boss fights were redundant. Yeah. Half of the fights were, were, were pretty redundant, but the, yeah. the settings themselves... Yeah. Fantastic. Oh yeah. And and the gimmicks in those were yeah. fantastic. Uh teaser um, for Yggdrasil and teaser for the viewers watching the video. I have a Skyward Sword video coming. And it is a video I've wanted to make for a while, just kind of getting to the point and asking the serious questions. Why do people feel this way about Skyward Sword? Because still to this day, I don't understand. I don't understand mm -hmm. why people the outcry is we want dungeons, we want music, we want story. And people will still continue to go back and say Skyward Sword was a bad game. Because motion I, I controls and fly, and then they'll yeah, ignore everything else. Yeah. It's, I, I don't want to compare it to Xenoblade 2, but... <laughs> no, that's where yeah. I was going next. That's where I was going next. It's, it's bad first impressions that people who never played the game will have seen those impressions before making their own judgments, and then yeah. that's that. And then it's just known as a <laughs> as a mediocre game when it's really so much more. Yeah. In fact, my number one, uh, the number one thing I would like to see for any Zelda game coming out in the future, my number one thing, if yeah. they ever do a big story oriented game again, and this could work with breath with with uh, oh, the open world so setting for Tears of the Kingdom, the number one Zelda thing that I would go absolutely nuts for, I would be all in for, would be we get a Link in Zelda. Or no, we don't get a Zelda. We get a story about the true original Link, the one who'd failed, the one who dies before the events of Skyward Sword. Because that has the grounds to be potentially like, I wouldn't say rated M, I wouldn't go yeah. so far as to say that. But this has a chance to go back into the, that gritty rated T Twilight Princess uh, aesthetic yeah. and storytelling. Because this is a link that's meant to lose the fight. That's it's meant to end on a macabre and somber ending, um, with Zelda with with Hylia's sacrifice and yeah. and uh, dem uh, demise's yeah. original ceiling. Um, that's my but number that's, one thing, and that could work in a tier. Age of Calamity, because Age of Calamity yeah. had the chance to do a Torn of the Golden Country ending, and it didn't. I know. And I was yeah. like, no, no, I can't, I can't. Yeah, yeah. and the thing is. I think as a genre 
or as, as like uh, gaming itself in in modern age, they're slowly becoming more okay with telling those kinds of dark ending stories where not everything has to end off um, always peppy or like even like bittersweet with both good notions. Yeah, Torna um, the Golden Country is a perfect example of that. Torna, yeah. You look at Torna, up until Xenoblade 3, you know, we all thought Xenoblade 2's ending was very bittersweet. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Wait, and then even Xenoblade, Xenoblade 3, 3 uh, until Future Redeemed, we thought that Xenoblade 3 had a bitter, bittersweet ending. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Z exactly. That's, so, why, that's so, why I said earlier, like, Nintendo, like, works so closely with Model of Soft, but for the next Zelda game, they should get some script writers in mm -hmm. on the like writing team to like make a game like this because Model Assault, yeah. like still to this day, I mean, I'm still playing more games as the months and years go on. But as of now, Xenoblade Chronicles is the best video game story I've ever experienced. So if if I had to if I had to be critical on what I would like for the next game, if they did have to go like the open world Tears of the Kingdom route. Take the lessons that you've been building since Breath of the Wild. We saw improvements in tiers, maybe not on the story aspect, but the open world aspect and player creativity. Keep working on those. Keep yeah. elevating those beyond anything else. Like yeah. I will still I, I still love and gush about I'll still love and gush about all the positive aspects of tiers because when you're not talking about the main story, tiers is like a nine near ten out of ten for me. You know? Yeah, it, it is the greatest open world video game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, and it but... is simply because of the verticality, because I have mm -hmm. never in a video game I have never been able to go from the sky down to the surface into the underground. No video game I've ever seen or played in my entire life it has the ability to do that. And because of that, this game is already leaps and bounds above so yeah, many. Yeah, and games. near seamless, near seamless too. Like yeah, yeah, obviously like there's frame drips here, dip, dips here, and, and there. it's running on um, this. Little but it's brick of exactly a it's running it's running on 2015 2016 gear yeah. essentially like yeah. old gens like mine my switch is a is a first gen switch yeah, and this it's still one, this one's fine. OLED, but it's yeah, still got like, the same chip inside it's still like the yeah, same like, performance oh, and all that yeah like oh yeah. kakariko dips like well, it did that in breath of the wild it's like i like i would have hoped for yeah. some better optimization but yeah. it's like they're trying to load the depths and the sky yeah. world up above. They're trying to do I all these say, things. I'm not a frame rate <clears throat> kind of stickler. Like we're no, like, both of us play Xenoblade, which is already a graphical and technical masterpiece on the Switch. Mm -hmm. But I will say that fire temple was chugging. <laughs> I oh, was yeah. just doing ultra hand trying to make a bridge. And it was down like below the twenties, and I was going. I still, <laughs> yeah. I still think Kakarikos were chugs for me, but yeah. yeah, definitely when you fuse too many things, I could see it. Yeah, um, with Ultra I Hand, and it, it was the Fire Temple for me. Like I was doing the mine carts, I was making bridges, and it was there chugging, was, and I was um, I was playing on docked, so I want to want to see it on handheld. Just there like was curiosity. one. There was one shrine. There's like a treasure chest, and it's like hidden in the sort of ball pit. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go for it. It's an optional chest. But I was like, instead of pulling out one ball at a time with the ultra hand, what if I just fused all the balls together and I just lifted all the balls up collectively? So I just kept I did fusing that. And fusing I did the exact same thing. Anymore. And I lifted it up, and then just frames went down to like single mm -hmm. digits for a moment. And you I was know, like, oh my God. You know what's kind of funny? and kind of sad like have you seen those memes of like that one vtuber who's doing that puzzle correctly whereas it's a dsp who's like i can't do this it's not working oh uh i have to put one ball in at a time like the duality oh yes i have i have yeah, yeah. it's really funny but i don't i wouldn't say i did it the dsp way but i did it like your way like i would fuse all the balls together and i would be like oh it's kind of tedious and i was like hey what is this like it's like a scoop. I was like, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, and then no, I, I did it that way. You have to attach the, the scoop way. to the vehicle and drive it in. I was and like, have oh. the vehicles go, and then it just pushes everything. Yeah, yeah that's what I picked up on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that you know that just ends up being player player yeah. perspective how players want to handle things. I will say um, a couple more points before we close out because mm -hmm. it's getting on the longer side. But I'm I'm totally fine with that. But also. Real quick, 
dungeons and shrines, what did you think? And I also want to end off after that with just some positives. And, and it's not that we've been negative, we've been critical. But I also want to like hear what was your takeaway from this game and where does it rank in like other Switch games. So let's talk about dungeons and shrines first. Okay, okay. Um, shrines I would argue are a fair bit better than Breath of the mm -hmm. Wilds for one. There's not really been one I've had to like come back to. They've all been pretty straightforward bar like a few, but it's like you spend a little bit of time there, you figure it out. Or again, if it allows you, you figure a different way than what's intended to get across an obstacle. Um, as for the dungeons themselves, super glad to see them far better than uh, the Divine Beast ones where you sort of got the same gimmick. Uh, that being said, which one was it? Varudanya? Uh, the Goron Divine Beast yeah. still, Varudanya. still was my favorite of the four. And um, yeah, Las Gorondia is in, in, like pretty ingenious. I enjoy using the yeah. carts, but some of them, like at some point, I was just like, okay, it's like ascend and get <laughs> yeah, through yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, I, I think those dungeons the... are way too non linear because yeah. I mean, I didn't expect Stone Tower going in. Or because they do grounds. have to, they do have to expect the verticality. Like you're playing with ascend, you're doing all these things. So in that way, I could sort of understand, for example, how some of these ended up. Um, the which one? Not the Rito. The Rito one was probably my second favorite. Up until the very end of the Lightning Temple. Uh, no, actually, you know, I would still argue Lightning Temple is my favorite. The entrance, the opening act into Lightning Temple is fantastic. And yeah. then and then you go under the tomb for a bit. You go under the temple for a bit. And you're, like, actually exploring ruins. And it's, like, an actual dungeon. Oh, my God. That was so amazing. That entrance because... was was beautiful you I know love i ascended so much. too much and i went like all the way up into the dungeon and i didn't into bring the final boss room i think so i i think i even went so far above that i went to the ceiling and then i was like mm -hmm. oh dang i left Riju behind so i had to go all the way back to the entrance and that was yeah. cool because i was like wow this is that i i just really like that that was that was really yeah. cool um i would have to say lightning temple is my favorite, followed yeah. by the Air Temple, the Wind Temple, mm -hmm. uh, then Lost Garandia, and then the Water Temple. Like, they could have done more with Water Temple. I, I like the Water Temple more than I thought I would, actually. It was okay, but they could have done more than just leaving it as, like, some sky puzzles. Yeah. It, it was I cool. I, I think the weird thing about Water Temple was the zero gravity stuff. I was still getting used to that. It was a little weird. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised that Hyrule Temple wasn't. I, I or not Hyrule Temple. I feel like Hyrule Castle should have had a little bit more going on. Yeah, I um, because I wish you weren't just chasing after Zelda. Yeah, yeah. but I will say uh, I definitely appreciate um, the fact that you can just go there right away and get very incredible. Yeah, gear right I did away. that. And I got the champion's leather leathers there. I got the royal mm. guard set there. I got the shrine there. And the mob yeah. variety in that in there is far more terrifying than it ever was in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Still yeah, sad, yeah. no dark nuts. Still sad, yeah, there's no I dark nuts. Yeah, I remember you were saying like I I actually went back to some of our episodes and you're like, dude, imagine if you're at the gates of Hyrule Castle, and you see a dark nut. I was like, ah, I would love that. Yeah, because you're so used to Bacoblins and the Lionels, and like not the Lionels, but like uh, the Lizalfos and like a couple Lionels here and there. Um, mm -hmm. The Bacoblin bosses were a nice addition. Um, Horriblins were fine, but I've never really had a problem with the Horriblin. They just, uh, yeah. they just stand there. I, I, had a, I wouldn't say I had a problem with them, but they were annoying in the caves. They would I always think the like, the caves like, early. Yeah. The like likes annoy me, and I only deal with them because I know there's like a chest with something yeah. in there. The Horriblins were annoying because of the noises they make. They sound like monkeys. <laughs> they terrified me the first time I saw them, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. But then it's like, okay, well, they don't really do much of anything. Yeah. Um, like, if they hit you, it hurts, but that's it. Yeah. Also, do you like the caves? Because I love the caves. The caves are cool. I do like the, I do like the caves. Because I like that, that every well. That was a very cool thing to do to expand the surface. Because that those caves are just one small i wouldn't say small one part of what makes the surface different 
and there's so many of them and mm -hmm. like you find them in the most unexpected places it's so awesome i love yeah. it and you can uh, you can use the satori if you find a yeah. satori yeah. offering and offer it you it just le it shows you all the caves in the yeah. area which is nice yeah um and they have a lot of good yeah. rewards in there they have boss fights they have gear they have chests mm -hmm. they have weapons all that stuff so it's cool yeah no i will absolutely say they they did they did really well in making the open world exactly more open world because uh, they, they really cleared up on a lot of the vacancies. I wish there was still more to do with Koroks. Like the mm -hmm. escort, if Korok escorts are fun. Mm -hmm. are, 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 they're fine. They're a better upgrade. Uh, but eventually it's like when you see them and it's like, really? Like I just helped those ones over there. I used some of my resources. I don't want to do that again. And then it's like you just see like all the stuff you have to do to like get it back. And I'm just like, ah, nah, sorry, buddy. Next time. Yeah. Um, or they could just be like really yeah. funny and you just overshoot them or you just end up hurting them in some way. Um, although obviously you can't hurt them, but it's funny, yeah. especially seeing what how everyone tries doing things with Barbecued the Barbecued Koroks. Koroks. Barbecued Koroks Grilled up vegetables. In its and exploded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's yeah. always fun. Yeah. Uh, some of the Korok puzzles were better. Um, mm -hmm. They were still kind of annoying, but it's whatever. It was fine. Um, yeah, uh, overall for me, like, I, I I honestly have no idea how I would rank the dungeons. I really haven't thought about it that much. I will say, though, when I went into the dungeons, I enjoyed them. The theming was better. The vibe was better. The whole, like, atmosphere, look, feel, music, bosses, that was good. When I realized there were terminals again, I was a little disappointed. Not really sad, know? yeah. Because I was like... Yeah. I was like non-linearity open-endedness is good but <sighs> there's only like three keys in all of the game yeah, and, and like two of them are and hidden shrines, in shrines of yeah. the dungeons and like again uh the zelda team says that they've done this because the old formula is restricting but at the same time i'm like but i miss it i miss yeah. stone tower i miss arbiter's grounds and snow peak and ancient if they can and, just uh, if they can just bring back life into the main story and give us traditional Zelda orchestral music while maintaining like all the boons that Tears of the Kingdom brought into the Breath of the Wild style, I would be content if they continued open worlds. But right now, it's like we're in, what is this, six years now? of breath of the wild style for mainline games uh we had a little bit of reprieve with link's awakening hd but like i want i want a, a, a new title that just like it, it's it's almost selfish sounding to say yeah. but it's like why can't we have it all because yeah. this is a team that's done both now and it's like can't you just make a game with both you know what? Like, it's why, funny that why they do you did. have to sacrifice? Yeah. They have made a game with both, and it's called Link Between Worlds. And <laughs> I mean, Link Between Worlds is great, but like, translate that into 3D, guys. Come on. Right. And like, they can do it. They can do it. I know they can. I don't know if they will, is the question. I don't know if they will, because Zelda Team is great. I love them. Aonuma and Fujibayashi are some of my favorite developers of all time. Like, Aonuma is the reason I play games. Like, Ocarina of Time is the reason I play games today, and I am the person I am today. So I have utmost respect for this Zelda team, but their, <laughs> their stubbornness to do some things is a little weird. Like, with Skyward Sword, they got so much pushback on linearity that they went the complete opposite direction. Now that they've got a lot of praise and good publicity and sales from this i'm a little nervous as to what they are going to do for the next couple games is it going to be a balance is it going to be even more open-ended is it going to be even more non-linear who knows i like the approach to puzzle solving with the shrines i love the shrines i love having to do things your own way but I want more structure with the story, like you said. I want more structure in the dungeons, maybe. And just the story and the narrative and the structure of the game to be 
a little more streamlined. Yeah. Do you think we're going to return um, for a third game to the world of the wild? No, no, please, please, please. I don't please, want please, that. Please, 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 no. They can, they can. Please, no, please. They can keep the aspects. They can keep what they've learned from these two games. But if I see the overworld and it's the same with some moderate some minor to moderate changes again i'm gonna be i'll be disappointed because i've never been disappointed with a zelda game pre-release yeah i will do this, this is also this is also a world where this is also a world where ganon itself is done so yeah. they'd either have to bring some other antagonist into the mix but i wouldn't want that for one because it's always been about the, the three aspects yeah um but again, like now they're forsaken. Okay. They've forsaken the twi the Triforce, two games in a row now. Yeah. I forsaken, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't think it will be. I think if they do it in Hyrule, I want it to be an old Hyrule or a far flung into the future Hyrule, or just go into a new place like do Termina, do something like Termina. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, like, I would like. I already told you like earlier in this. I would like nothing more than to see the original link yeah um but you yeah. know what's my that, that's not gonna work in tier style either yeah. because because tier style is like the original hyrule is roru and so that's obviously um that's obviously like its own separate aspect so i might make some videos on the lore because i don't think tears of the kingdom has completely retconned everything I think it's retconned some things, but not everything. But I have to kind of formulate my thoughts into a theory video and a script, and I'll eventually get that out. I, if, if like we have to, because a lot of people are very contesting on like whether people should even follow the timeline to begin with. If, if we are going by the timeline, in my head, I personally think of tier, the, the, the wild timeline. Um, as its own like separate entity entirely yeah because it just messes too much otherwise with what's established yeah. with what's supposed to be established it's a fourth um, timeline yeah exactly it's like a fourth timeline but it's not on the timeline at all yeah. at the same point like it's almost like a hyrule warriors aspect yeah. it's, it's exactly like hyrule warriors it's like you have the three powers uh here's all the elements but it's it's not like it takes from the timeline but it doesn't it doesn't deal with the timeline yeah i think yeah it's weird yeah. i think the future is bright i don't think we'll be in the same hyrule but we'll see but real quick before we get into our final topic i will say my dream zelda game like you said the first hero uh before mm -hmm. skyward sword right mine is a third hero of time game because the hero of time is my favorite link he has the saddest story he's the saddest hero his story is melancholy sad and depressing and it's what would just, it be like his journey after termina it would be his because there are um well we see the hero of time is the hero of shade in twilight princess right yes, yes i would i would want the game to end with him becoming the hero of shade i would want him to like go to war and fight in the war like basically there was a war that broke out after link left to termina because the Gerudo were fighting the Hylians and they're like, oh, the Gerudo are bad because this kid told us about Ganondorf. So Link will come back. He would probably marry Malin, have kids with Malin, whose later descendants would be Twilight Princess Link. But this guy is still so like, sh like he's so like broken and depressed after going through Termina, going through like ha having to like grow up so fast. He's still like not like, very mm -hmm. fulfilled with what he's done in life so he becomes like a soldier of hyrule and he's like i don't want people to know that i am link so i'm gonna keep this burden within me but i'll still like be this person in hyrule like helping people solving quests and all that but it, it, it just won't yeah be the same. A, a, a darker more thoughtful story yeah and eventually like I it'll have his own story he'll like fight in the war he'll do this he'll raise his kids and eventually the game will 
end like it, it will be like logan i don't know if you see the movie logan it will end like logan where he will have a very uh sad but very like fulfilling and epic death and then he'll become the hero shade mm -hmm. yeah yeah. yeah, that's what that's exactly the same vibe I want for the yeah. original link because the original link loses yeah. against the Mize. Or yeah. like he do, he does like a near fatal blow but only enough that Hylia herself can only restrict the Mize beyond that point. Yeah. And then and then it's just that remorseful Hylia who actually really truly loved uh wh what Link came to be that she lit she gave up her own godhood to throw them in this cycle that one they could always be together but at the cost of always having to deal with the essence of demise yeah and that established the trinity the, the trinity yeah um so like it, it needs something like that like my god can you imagine again like while we were saying xenoblade the xenoblade yeah, script dude. Can and Xenoblade does things like, like that. that. That like what you just described is very similar to the plot of Xenoblade Three, mm -hmm. and even two, like with the Trinity cores and all that, it's very similar. Yeah. So like, yeah, I think they could do it. But one last thing before we close out, we have been very critical about Tears of the Kingdom. So final takeaways: What did you think about this game? What are your positive takeaways? And what were the big things you straight up like you loved about this game? All right. So uh, as I said before, this game is a near nine, nine out of ten, near ten out of ten for me when we're not yeah. talking about the story because the story just hurts my heart as a yeah. avid fan of the Zelda series mm -hmm. for such a long time. Um, that being said, again, uh, open world, the open world is, uh, design, um, the Op the, the choice they made to like give it more life give it more quests more characters more things to do even if it just ends up feeling like a lot of the time it's just korok and uh supporting supporting yeah. uh um supporting our boy the oh my god oh my god i hated that guy what's his name really i love the memes coming out of him oh actually he was addison and um uh uh, Hudson's daughter is Madison. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. But yeah, I, th that guy yeah. is silly. He's he's whatever. But yeah. There's one <laughs> meme of him I saw. It's like it's a bunch of him, but it's the uh, it's that statue of like the American soldiers holding the flag. Yeah. Oh. Like, all of them are I like will six support you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but so it's like even if it devolves into that, it's like. Even then, there's just so much more to do in the overworld, more to explore. Um, you always feel like you're being productive. Like, it's like, and uh, again, Breath, same thing that Breath of the Wild had. Tears it has like 10 times more. You're doing something, you see other things, and it just like keeps building and building. You could spend a fraction of your time. Yeah. And like, it'll feel like hours, of, like hours have passed, and you feel like you've done nothing. Yeah. But at the same time, you've also been productive. Yeah. I like that. It can feel overwhelming to some players, but for me, I really enjoyed that. I do enjoy Ultra Hand. I do. En I wish that um, fusions had a bit more variety mm -hmm. beyond just empowering your weapon and then a handful of a handful of changes for arrows mm -hmm. i think we were sort of misled on that like because they used they used like what the puff shroom they used the arrow eye the eye plus the arrow mm -hmm. and they pretty that's like pretty like much the two big interest points like yeah we all found out about rocket shields and whatnot yeah. but beyond Th that there are some cool ones that, there was an yeah. I liked, um, there was a cool encounter I had where I fused a spike ball to my shield and I chipped away at a Bokoblin with a stone mask by just parrying at it. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, yeah. the gemstones fusing it to your weapons was nice, but fusing it to your shields would also help. Like if you were in the cold, if you had a ruby shield, it would be heating you up on the back. If you had a sapphire shield, it would keep you cool on the back. So that was nice yeah. as well. So things so, like that were cool. Yeah, I wish there were a few more interactions, but there's some funk going on with what we have that I'm, I'm a little satisfied. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know if you know this, but the proper way to shield surf, the most, the most currently durable shield 
that's been tested is a is, butter shield. Well, it was like a royal Hylian shield with icy gourmet meat. Yes. Yeah. 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 The butter shield kind of works. The minecart shield works very well. And yes, the spy, uh, yeah. I icy meat one is very good as well. Yeah. The frozen gourmet meat uh, shield, which like, which like I had a laugh figuring out. So I hope more of that stuff comes yeah. along. The thing is, I hope interactions in Tears of the Kingdom is the same aspect of Breath of the Wild, where we'll still be learning new things in years and years yeah. to come. I hope that sustains. I hope that trend continues, as it did with Breath of the Wild. Um, other than that, uh, graphical fidelity obviously improved, in, as opposed uh, compared to Breath of the Wild. Like there's like a there's a definite. Uh, graphics update mm -hmm. it might not feel like that especially as i just came from breath but as yeah. i just came from breath of the wild i was playing through it before tears i was replaying it before tears mm. uh so i saw it right away i might just feel like it's the same world but it's not yeah um so i can appreciate all those things the return to dungeons the predecessors to dungeon the predecessor quests to those dungeons i really enjoyed yeah. i felt like each of the towns were much more alive and I felt like the general Hylian uh, being more aware of the times, what's going on, here's how we're reacting to this, here's what's going on with this. Yeah. I think all of those are... The NPCs overall are just a lot better, more yeah. fun to the NPCs, with. The NPCs are a big highlight for yeah. me. Any, anything that makes a world feel more alive and immersive, I will 100% take. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I will say this. For my praise, I mean... I won't go into it too much. I made a lot of videos on this game about things that I love, and I love this game so much, but I am really conflicted right now on what is my favorite game on the Switch. It is between Tears of the Kingdom and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Because Xenoblade Chronicles 3, in my opinion, I declared this last year in my review for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that I think it is a better game than Breath of the Wild because mm. it has the better package. It has the gameplay, it has a story, and it has the music. But can I say the same for Tears of the Kingdom? Because the gameplay is fantastic in Tears of the Kingdom. The story is good, but like Xenoblade. <laughs> yeah. And also like the music in Xenoblade is like some of the best music I've ever heard. So that is where I'm conflicted on right now, which that's is gonna the be better my, game. Uh, that's going to be my, my upcoming video is actually a revisit to Xenoblade 3, which I'm trying to aim for the end of... Uh, next month on yeah. its anniversary. I, I want to do a one year anniversary video as well because mm -hmm. I had my review in like early September release. So I want to go back especially to that review and say like, do I feel the same way about this game? Yeah, yeah. Like I did um I did that main story video. Yeah. Which unfortunately didn't get, get too far out. I hope like maybe the algorithm can pick it up again at some point, but probably not going to. Um, but that's besides the point. I just want to revisit uh, now that we've had a year to soak it in and think on all these things. Because you could argue it's the better package, but like a lot of fan sentiment still seems to linger around Xenoblade 2. Have you noticed? Have, have, yeah. Have you seen that? Like, I, I think you saw this, but like there's that meme of like, two is better than one but one is better than three which which game series is this everyone yeah. was saying xenoblade and i like i had to quote tweet and i had to like straight up ask i was like guys what what is it like what really rubbed you guys the wrong way and it's either again, twitter every two days there's no, some sort of and here's the thing the responses i got were not what I wanted to hear, but it is what I expected to hear. People were just saying, I like 2 better and I don't like 3 as much, and I can't really explain it. And I was like, that's that's the whole thing. I want to know. Like, I yeah. want to know why. I want to know why. Because I have reasons why I like 3 genuinely and significantly more than 2. But I also mm -hmm. love 2. 2 has such a special place in my heart, and I like cheer for people to play Xenoblade 2. I like tell them, play it, experience it, and love it because it's so good. But I will always love 3 more, and like, I've talked about that in many videos. And I've even made a video once, like, is Xenoblade Chronicles 3 really that bad? And oh boy, some of the comments I got on that video were fun to read. But <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand, like, I mean, maybe a couple years later 
things will normalize within the I wouldn't say the fan base, but like now that Future Redeemed is out, things will kind of like normalize and like we have the whole package now. So that is yeah, one thing. Yeah, I but... think I think Future Redeemed added a hell of a lot to to um, quell yeah. some of the feelings we've yeah. had on Xenoblade Three, and I'll get into that, of course. But um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, yeah, that, for me right now, I'm on the fence of like which game is better. It's Tears it's a the... tough choice for Switch because Switch yeah. just has everything at this point, yeah. you know? And like um Pikmin fans gonna eat yeah. well in a few weeks. The demo yeah. apparently was very oh, I get yeah. to play the demo, but it's apparently out and it's been yeah. very like high praise. Oh yeah. Two D Mario's coming, Mario RPG remake is coming, so Mario that's that's really yeah. cool as well. And yeah, there's no way like there's no way most people could have like a definitive number one Switch game. Yeah. I like, know a I lot think of people I'd yeah. struggle I'd struggle to even put in a top 10, you know? Yeah. Like, do, what are my top 10? Do you have a number like, one right struggle. now? Do you have a number one you oh, can choose right now? I, I wouldn't know what to pick. Yeah. I really wouldn't. Yeah. Like, it would definitely be Xenoblade 2 or Xenoblade 3 yeah. or Tears. But when I think of everything else, like, that's like, you know, Super Mario Odyssey yeah. and... Uh, all these other titles dude i'm playing smt5 right now and i forgot how good that game is it's so amazing yeah, yeah. i'm back on octopath traveler 2 yeah. i very i i just beat finally one of the one of the eight main stories mm. and it's like it's phenomenal and like the writing was so much better the music was all there yeah it's all hinting towards something and um Obviously, if Zeta, if uh, not Xenoblade, if Octopath One was anything to go by, after those eight stories hits, there's gonna be an optional story in Dungeon, and yeah. I'm really looking forward to that because, like, even at the end of this main chapter, they're still giving me things to work on in in the yeah. main world. Mm -hmm. It's like fantastic, and I still have other games to go through, like Triangle Strategy. I just picked up Live Alive, and I understand yeah, those are. Yeah, I need to like, play Live Alive. Exclusive. Yeah. I, I understand those aren't Switch exclusive titles, but my God, like it's on the Switch. Sea of Stars is out in about mm. two months' time. Fire Emblem I games, the, Three Houses yeah. and Engage. Those are Three Houses Engage. Nintendo Switch Online just brought out mm. another fi old Fire Emblem classic. My favorite one, yeah. one of my favorite ones, actually with Lynn, uh, Hector, and Elliot. Oh, Basically, great, yeah. Switch has it all. There's no way that I could just put it down to one thing, whether it be a main Switch title or the NSO. Yeah switch is just switch is just outstanding right yeah, now yeah i'm i'm trying to narrow down a top 10 list to make a video on it but it's hard it's hard right you, now you know i'm gonna have that kind of video ready by the time they announce the successor which yeah. by the way uh we're getting more and more things being said about like the successor and like the backdrop like uh blizzard ceo um bobby he who shall not be named yeah. Kotick. Uh, saying like he regrets skipping out on the switch and like apparently he has like because a dev he's kit stupid. of what's next. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently he has like a dev kit of what's coming next. I don't I don't think he like has that. a dev kit, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that was a, embellished, but I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if he has an inkling of what's so, coming next. Um basically what he said I might also be misremembering this, but people were reporting that it's going to have the power of a HN system. Mm -hmm. I th don't think so. What he said is we will be able to perf uh, develop games easily on the Switch successor because of our experience with 8th gen consoles. So I, I think that's sort of what he said. And based off of that, that could mean a lot of things. Yeah, people are yeah. like PS4. And it's like, it's like, it's not going to be PS4. PS4 it's is a little on the lower end of the scale than what I thought, but people are saying yeah. it will be PS4 as the PS4 base free. and yeah. then on top of that it'll have ai upscaling with dlss fsr or whatever and then it'll have that significant boost if yeah. it's that if it's a steam deck with ai upscaling day one i'm getting a day yeah. one <laughs> and and everything uh i i always forget his last name the nintendo president shintaro furukawa furukawa furukawa, furukawa yeah. Excuse yeah excuse me uh everything he's been saying in the last week alone it's like you know we're aiming, we're, we're creating the next gen moving forward with the 
account um, system in Nintendo mind. Nintendo account that. system in mind with Nintendo Switch Online in mind. And that's exactly what I want to hear. Literally, all they need to say is just backwards compatibility in mind next. And I am sold, you know? Because if my entire Switch, um, if, if everything I have as an avid physical collector, if everything I have plus NSO can move forward with me, I would be like, I'm sold, you know? So yeah. yeah, like I just um, I'm really looking yeah. forward. I love the Switch. I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming next. Yeah, um, I, the Switch is my... shaping up to be my favorite like video game system of all time. And yeah, I think it. I think it is. I think it is. Like I have the older. I have the older ones for nostalgia, but the the immense yeah um, because i horizons that switch has brought yeah, i'm younger i never grew up during the snes and n64 era but i still love those mm -hmm. systems because of their catalog of games which i've gone back and played through virtual console emulation however i have gotten to play them but switch like i have it and i am playing games on it and i've been playing games mm -hmm. on it for the past like five six years and i've loved basically every single game i played on this and yeah right. yeah it's great but yeah i we can close out here we've been talking a while but it was a very <laughs> very very awesome discussion i also if anyone is watching till the end thank you so much for watching till the end yeah I we definitely remind, tracked off but yeah, it was worth it it was like, worth it like yeah it. but i want to remind people because i mean a lot like this doesn't need to be said but i just still want to remind people we love Zelda Tears, Tears of the Kingdom. We love this game. It is great. It is, again, I said it is one of the greatest games I've ever played. It is my, it is the best open world game I have ever played. But us being critical comes from us being Nintendo fans and Zelda fans and Xenoblade fans and all that. Because mm -hmm. we have Absolutely. experience from other series and from the Zelda series to look back onto. Any, any closing thoughts, Yggdrasil, before we close out? No, I mean, I, I completely agree. It's We're saying this of a point out of love. We're not saying this because um, we're, we're... Basically, if you can get past the idea of taking a critique as a personal attack, which unfortunately too many people do Zero in this fans. day and age. Yeah, unfortunately too many people do that in this day and age. Um, we're not hating on Tears of the Kingdom by any stretch when we critique it. We're we're disappointed of what could have been yeah. and we only hope that it's taken into consideration in future titles you know and what kind of criticism i dislike mm. and i have a video coming out about this xenoblade related teaser by the way it is criticism based off of people not having played the game so for you example, know i like, was thinking earlier like, to make something like that too and honestly you've made a video on this and i kind of hint at it in my upcoming video it's like people watching video game donkeys videos on mm -hmm. xenoblade and being like yeah I, I can't play this game because of what he said i can't yeah. believe people play this game because of what he said and i'm like there, I was can't it that you're one twitter this post because you're wrong <laughs> was it that one twitter post from a few days ago where yes. someone was it like What's name like a more conflicting like yeah. thing and theories or whatnot? That was and one it was of the most silly like, tweets I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah, it was like he's lame. He's na labeling like whole. He's labeling whole um, titles like Persona and uh, like that's fine. But then he specifically labeled. They specifically labeled Xenoblade Two. Yeah, I was like, and I was like, okay, that's like a very clear jab. And it's like. Oh, he put Paper Mario as well. And I wanted to, like, I quote tweeted that with, like, something serious. But honestly, I could have just gone, like, the more easily ratioable um, statement of saying, tell me yeah. you don't make any assumptions on video games for yourself. You let other people dictate yeah. what is enjoyable for you. Know, you know, that same person, <laughs> he was like, he tweeted, he was like, what is going to be like the worst video game remake upcoming remake or something he said something like that right? <laughs> my yeah. quote tweet response was the inevitable xenoblade chronicles 2 definitive edition <laughs> oh god oh god it's whatever that is two two gens yeah. from now probably yeah yeah I, I i'm not ready for that to be announced but yeah overall oh, no. like 
yeah, uh, this is how we feel about the game. The thing is, viewers of my channel know that I love this game and I've been talking about it for the past like two months and it feels good to have this spoiler cast to like talk about spoilers, but also like get things off my chest and be like, here's what I wish could have happened. Here's what I wish could have happened and all mm -hmm. that. And yeah, thank you so much for joining once again. Yggdrasil's, always, always a pleasure. Yeah, Yggdrasil, uh, Yggdrasil's stuff, links and channel and Twitter will be linked in the description below like always. You want to tease anything and any upcoming projects or anything like that? Um... For personal stuff, unfortunately, my most recent video, which I was working on, which was going to be Heroes and Villains of Ionios, mm -hmm. I've been working on that one for close to a month now, but I realized just how quickly we're coming up on, um, the, on the anniversary. anniversary. Yeah. So I'm think so I I was heavily considering it and I am gonna go through with it. I'm going to turn all of those efforts into a large retrospective video. Yeah on um Xenoblade chronicles 3 and you know what could it like uh how it's been that since a, a year ago oh, yeah um aside I'm from very that, for that I, one. yeah aside from that i am working on a number of collaboration videos um up until this one actually i can cross this one off now but i i have four different collaboration videos that Ooh, i've been working on exciting um some and of them through Matt one, Kaiser. one that both of us have been doing is already out which you guys should check out mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 with Matt Kaiser. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a, it was a phenomenal video to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one was great. Maybe you can link that one down oh, below. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll link that down below. Uh, but there's that. I'm getting in work with Shifted Pyro, some Ooh, things with uh, nice. not JB, but who, um, my goodness, a, a few others, but pretty much, yeah, I'm on like high. With I'm the on Zeta hold Blade with like, my, Ooh, Yeah, that's with the Xenoblade exciting. community. And that makes me say, that makes me so happy that like even if I'm in this lull, uh, I'm still at least through the Xenoblade Three community, I'm well known enough to the point that um, uh, well, not well known, I should say, because I only have like 400 plus subs to my name, but I'm I'm known or at least within high regards with other members of the content creator community that they're willing to collab with me. And yeah. for that, I'm forever grateful. I I never say no to a collab. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll continue yeah. to enjoy doing these collabs with you. So thank yeah. you for having me on board again. Yeah, uh, Adrisol is always a regular on the EXP podcast. And it's always fun I'm to have him on. I'm always happy to be. Yeah. But um, I will say, my viewers love Xenoblade. I know a lot of my viewers love Xenoblade, and I feel like a lot of them are missing some Xenoblade content. It's coming from me, but also, Adrisol makes a lot of awesome Xenoblade content. So check him out as well. But yeah, um, I'm going to close it out here. It was so much fun having you on. And yeah, this has been Nishquick and Yggdrasil talking about Cheers of the Kingdom and Nintendo and all that stuff. Signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today. Like Tears of the Kingdom, which has been out yeah. for a while. You have a lot of time to play it. See you guys in the <laughs> next one. Have a good one, everyone. Later.